All right, it's, um, it's five o'clock now, and I guess that I'm the last thing standing between you guys and your well-deserved drink today. So um, I'd better get this started right away. And I have a tendency to go for 60 minutes anyway, so, um, but I'll see if I can make it a little bit shorter for once. But let's figure that out. So um, welcome to my session here at DrupalCon around uh, admin, um, admin-based themes or the admin experience for normal people. Um, you know, the non-developers, uh, which I've been looking into a little, little while. So, um, first of all, let me just use the right clicker. Is that the right one? Uh, let me just see. Uh -huh. Yes. So, my name is Morton, also known as Morton Birch, or Morton DK in this community, which is also my, um, you know, my Twitter handle. Um, actually, I'm the one who has the, the, um, the business card that says badass, so if you do not know that, that's how it is. Uh, I do run a shop called Theme Machine. It is Theme Machine, not the me machine, which uh, I've seen people yesterday completely ripping my theme machine out and now just taking the piss on me. Um, apparently it's because I stopped ranting about this, which I'm not going to talk about today. I'm not going to mention anything around markup or anything else, which I've been doing for the last 10 years, which also means that my material is new today. Um, but first of all, um, just to put it very clear, I love Drupal very much. Actually, I love Drupal so much that I've named my my two biceps after two popular Drupal distributions, Lightning and Thunder. Um, so, but today what I'm going to talk about first is like the, the, the whole like Drupal history of what I called developer-driven design. And so what is developer-driven design? Well, first of all, the first time I talked about design in the world of Drupal is almost 10 years ago. I did a buff at DrupalCon in Boston. And the first thing that happened there was um, I came into the room and there was two other people sitting there. And they talk, thought that, you know, Drupal and design, that's got to be database design. So me as a designer sitting there talking icons and stuff, they want to talk about how we designed the best database. I was like, holy crap, we're far, I'm far, far, far from home in this world. But that have changed over the years. Um, but Drupal have always been very good at being a developer-driven design system, as we see here in the very first version of Drupal almost 17 years ago. Um, those of us who know Drupal 1 can see here some patterns that we all know from from. From, from later on, Drupal, we have you know, an account, we have the block, block and a box, you know, calendar, comments, and so forth. We also have the very useful Drupal blue. Blue as a link color is always a good thing. Um, there was actually a theme already at this point, and there's actually one thing that you need to see here, and that is it is modern. Um, so already at this point, we are using the word modern as a thing that we do. Um, if we go further down here, we see the use of tables. Um, a little bit of spacing as it should be back in the days. Um, it goes up at Drupal 4 as well, doing the same thing. And then at some point we get to Drupal 4.7 and that's when you know, Blue Marine comes in. But it still keeps the same like design patterns, you know, use a table because it's data and that's what going to do. Um, in the same way how we modify and have all our lists, it's form fields, it blocks, it's elements, it's always in the table. Um, that goes further down as we come into, oh, a little bit too fast here, into Garland as well, which came back in Drupal 5 and, and Drupal 6, which was basically the admin theme. Um, at that point, there was no real difference between having an admin theme or non-admin theme. It was kind of like all swallowed together, which is kind of still is. Um, and then we come up to the era of 7, which is basically from back from 2009 and up until now, uh, which we all know. Um, so what I did here was actually, I took a bunch of screenshots. This is Drupal 7. And this is Drupal 8. As you can see, there's you know, a lot of things happened over these seven years of our admin themes. Or as the structure here says, you can see, loads of, loads of change, right? We really have a new product in Drupal 8. We used, what, seven years of our life to push in Drupal. I used four years of my life in the issue queue trying to get Twig in, and it still looks the same. Um, if you see content types, changed a little bit. Then we've got a drop down, or, or the drop links. Um, and so forth. The themes as well, it's the same thing. Um, it's pretty much the same theme that we built up. It changed a little bit, but it's kind of like, if you actually go all the way down to it, um, as I come here, here's my favorite part, by the way, of Drupal. Uh, permissions, right? Permissions is like one of, the, one of the good things as well that we try to work a, a lot with. Um, Permissions are actually kind of complicated because there's a lot of data in there. But again, it's a table because everything in Drupal needs to be a table because we're developers. So, of course, we do a table. The biggest things, biggest change I've seen over these seven years actually came into Drupal 
uh, 8.3, which is the uh, status page. This is how the status page used to look, and now it looks like this, which, I mean, I do enjoy a lot. Um, but basically, the only things that we changed from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 is uh, the, the admin menu. As you can see, they got a little bit of icons, changed a little bit. Um, you know, uh, there's more white space. It's a good thing. Um, tabs changed position. Um, <laughs> it, it became responsive, at least. Um, so I'm like sitting and looking at this, and, and I got a little bit cranky. I saw one tweeted out, like, now I'm going to bitch and moan about like, everything that's wrong in Drupal. Um, actually not. I was just like, more looking at it from, from the perspective of you know, how to design trends works, because it's kind of design trend. When, Drupal, when 7 came into Drupal 7, we were all so excited by it, and now we're kind of a little bit sad. And, and there's a reason for that. You know, anything that's, that was new at some point is going to you know, it's, it's gonna go through these phases. So, so this is kind of like, I was looking at different fashion elements. This is basically me when I was like, 19 years old, like Doc Martens, flannel shirt, Metallica White the Lightning shirt. I just bought a new one, actually, two days ago. <laughs> yes, that was a good year, 1984. Uh, you know, and cheddar and, and up jeans. So if you go back to 1992, you have, you know, bands looking like that. That was how we were looking at that point. And then I was looking at men's fashion, did a quick Google search, and you have the same thing. So we just have to wait, you know, 20 years. And then seven is going to be like the new hot thing. And I'm not saying that seven is, you know, it's, it's bad design. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that, you know, just as us who is 43 years old, at some point, you know, we used a lot. We're kind of getting a little bit tired. So at some point, you know, like the next decade, it's probably going to be hot again. Um, but I do think it's about time to begin to look into rethinking these things. Because if the difference between Drupal 8 and Drupal 7 is, is basically nothing, you know, why would you then go out and, you know, update it? Um, there we go. How, why would you go out and use a ton of money uh, on, on a thing where it's not really changing anything? Because basically we're, we're based, you know, um, as, as, a, as a record, as an album. See, I'm that old, I'm talking about records, and I found these two wonderful pictures. But if you want to go out and sell something, you just need to accept that you get, a, you, know, you get judged by how it looks. And I do think it's a little bit sad that here in our Drupal world, we've used you know, six, seven, eight years of building a new system. And we can talk all the, all the wonders about, like configuration management. I can talk days, and everybody who knows me knows I can talk days about Quick and the wonders of that. Um, but nobody besides us who knows it can see it, because anybody who's going to come in and use a Drupal 7 site versus a Drupal 8 site is going to see the same thing. So how are you even going to go to, you know, are you going to go into your boss at your company and be like, hey, so I want to upgrade my site to Drupal 8. Look how awesome it looks. And then you show them the 7 theme, which is the same they had in Drupal 7. So why would they upgrade when they cannot see that? So, I mean, so it's kind of like, you know, 17 years of, 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 of developer-driven design. Well, let me do it like this, so if there's developers in the room, you can actually understand what it, what it does. Because I know when I use, like, colors and do things like this, it goes into panic mode. Like, this is gold. Because you know, in the world of Drupal, it's like, code is gold, and, you know, design is it's a pretty thing. But it's an afterthought. It's always an afterthought. It's not like you come into the Drupal room and be like, yeah, I'm a designer, and you should, like, listen, look, hear me roar. It's more like, well, I'm a designer, and, yeah, well, can you walk over in that corner and then paint within the like the little blocks we've made for you. You can get like red and blue and green and just make it pretty. Um, and it's kind of turning into this mess. So I've been thinking a little bit like, why did we end up in this? How come did we end up in this kind of mess? So if I go back like 11 years, this is my first DrupalCon 11 years ago. Um, we're just a bunch of nerds, basically. Um, and we're never thinking about like who the audience were. We just want to build a system. A system where we could publish our websites and be done with it. We never thought about the audience. I mean, and normally when I think about my audience, it's like this dude, you know, who's standing behind me and explains to me, like, can we move it to the left, can we move it to the right, can we move it to the right? Little bit, little, just a niche, just a notch. How big is a notch? I still don't know, but I've moved a lot of websites around that way. Um, and the problem we have with this mess is like, it's, it's undefined, you know, is Drupal a tool? Is it, uh, is, it, is it a site? Are we building websites? Are we building you know, data structure, something, something? Who's the, who's the user? Who's actually using the admin interface? 
Is it you as a developer who's building all these things, or is it a site editor that put, puts the data in? And we're trying to put everything in to one big box, and we're trying to force everybody into the same thing, which, if you work in any level of design, know how hard it is. It's kind of like somebody says, well, I need a new logo that's, that's modern but timeless. We're kind of like, what? I mean, that, that doesn't make sense, right? It's like, how many, how many designers in here have, have worked on a modern but timeless design? There's at least three of you. I am not the only one to share this pain. So I look at Drupal as this. Drupal is, Drupal is used to build web things. That's what it does. Actually, a couple of years ago, what I came up with to try to figure out why I did not fit into this Drupal like, definition of Drupal developer, I came up with this thing that Drupal is built by engineers for developers. That's basically what it is. It's a bunch of fucking nerds hammering around trying to build something that they think are really, really fucking cool, and then we give it to that end user we don't really know. So what if we made Drupal instead of you know, something that's made by geeks for people? Begin to think that way instead. You don't think of like you as the target audience. You think about that person who's going to use it. Then Drupal turns into become another thing. It's like building this for people, not for ourselves anymore. Which I know as a developer makes me fucking scared because they don't, they don't even know how much a notch is. They just want things and I just want to build my stuff over in this corner. But that's not why we built Drupal. We're building Drupal because, you know, we wanted to kill the developer, we want to kill the designer, we want to kill all these people so normal people could build websites. That should be the goal. So instead of just moaning about it, how can we fix it? Well, there's different ways of fixing it. There's, of course, the trash it all. That's been like a good thing. You know, let's go on a complete tech lost nerdery, like rip everything out, go as much headless as we can, drop everything we've done and start all over. You know, kind of what, um, you know, TextMate did a couple of years ago when they were like 80% done with TextMate 2 and they skipped all the production because they want to make it perfect. How many here use TextMate today? Mark Carver <laughs> is still... Yeah, you use it sometimes. It's like, but you know, five years ago, everybody was using TextMate. Even better, you know this logo? <laughs> yeah, Netscape, right? Netscape came out with Netscape 6. And I was like, yeah, we're going to rebuild our whole platform. It's going to be this amazing thing. And we're starting this small project over here on the side called Firefox. Now, fast forward, they were building and building and building and building and building, and nobody used it. And so, in my opinion, what we should try to do instead of going like tech lost mode, actually look into like how can we fix it. Now, fix it in contrib, not try to fix it in core, because anybody who's been into any core uses, core core issues and trying to fix things inside a Drupal core knows that that's going to be a never-ending discussion where it's going to be really, really hard to get anything done. And there's a reason that I'm losing so much hair. It's not because I'm getting old. There's a reason that I have gray hair now. It's because of the fucking issue queues and having to discuss everything with everybody. You know, if there's one person in the room who thinks like, you know what, nah, I don't like that gray, they will then stop the issue from coming in, and then we have to discuss color theory once again. You don't have to have any kind of degree in, in you know, design or anything else. You can just stop it because you don't feel like it. Um, so if we, instead of trying to push all of this into Drupal core right away, do that in Contrib instead, then we can actually get stuff done. Um, that's at least my theory about it. I might be wrong. It happened before that I was wrong, once or twice. Anyways... So I was like, taking a step back and looking at the theme space. What do we do in the themes in Drupal? How does it work? Well, basically, your site has three... Oh, thank you. There we go. Basically, you have three, three themes. Say that really fast. Three themes, three themes, three themes. Three themes. Mm. Anyways, we have three themes in every Drupal site. And you're going to be like, nope, I have seven and my front-end theme. That is not true, my friends. You have three different ones. You have the thing you, you use for your Drupal admin thing. Right now, a bunch of you is probably going to use 7. Um, then you have your Drupal frontend, which is, you oh, know, ah, god damn it. This clicker is not working right. Then you have your normal frontend, and then you have what I call frontend admin tools. Are you, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, Dave. <laughs> I, Epic trolls. We have the heckling roller. If you want to heckle me, you need to sit over down here so I can actually throw water at you later on. <laughs> well, now I'm talking about the front end tools. Let's call them front end themes instead. No. So the idea for the front end you know, admin tools or themes, 
as you can see, I've not really figured out the names yet. I'm not calling it FAT because that would be fat and then, you know, somebody might think something, something. That's not the point of it. But the idea is that we have three different themes in your site. So what is front-end admin tools? Well, that is you know, your toolbar. It is there when you are developing your site. It goes over your, ad, your normal front-end and theme, and it's using something from somewhere in Drupal. It's actually using Drupal core elements. That's where it comes from. Right now, that's the same as 7, but that's not the same thing as it's the same theme. You can actually overwrite these elements. The same thing with like the inline editing. It's the same thing, or you know, contextual links, or the outside-in elements. All of these things are you know, different front-end tools, and they are all like inheriting from different places. Um, that's just, uh, this is just how to add it in. It's not important. So, so all of these like different front-end admin tools can, by separating these three different things out, you can then begin to focus on how should my admin experience actually be, how should that look, how should my front-end site look as on a normal level, and then how does my tools, when I'm logged in as an editor and have access to these elements, how do they actually interact? Because the whole idea of saying, well, I'm not going to give my end users any reason to use that, that's kind of like saying, well, so you're not going to give your end user like inline editing? which, you know, all the other systems is giving their users, so why wouldn't you? So all these elements, we need to, like, rethink that and package it in. Um, so with, with those different kind of things, that, that conceptual thinking, I started out by saying, well, I, had, I did one admin team, like, last year, and I said, well, okay, how, do, how can we change this? So how can we fix this issue? Um, so I came up with this theme called Eleven, uh, a theme that's not designed for developers, but actually designed for more of the normal user. So it's actually with the idea of trying to make stuff pretty um, and, you know, kill the tables. And actually a funny story from yesterday, when I demoed this the first time for anybody outside of pretty much my own apartment, because building, building layouts, building design ideas, building concepts out is really, really hard if you only show snippets out to people and can be really hard, you know. Designers get kind of sensible about their designs. So, but when I showed this off the first time, the first comment I got from one of the developers was like, but what if I want the table? I was just like, yes, exactly. But I have a solution for that, so no, no worries about that. So, so this, is, this is the very first like, public showing of my admin theme, 11. Um, the idea here is like, um, that instead of having a table of data, you have a bunch of cards. Um, instead of, uh, so as you, you move around your site, it's gonna be separate elements having an icon on them, having colors on them, having this concept of ideas. These, this used to be tables. It is not anymore. It's completely re rewritten. Same thing when you go into your content types. Well, why is a content type put in a table? If you browse around that, that doesn't look pretty. Um, you know, should we actually have like the, the, all the links visible from the get-go as well? Um, same thing when you come into manage fields. All these fields are now just elements in a table which makes things feel and look very, very technical. If you put them into a card instead, which is a, basically a card means it's a box that has like a specific, you know, an, an image and a title and some body text. If we try to think it this way instead, then suddenly you get away from the table look, you get away from the technical like, like interface and try to make it more human. Um, and of course, me and my love for icon iconography free, makes it really, really fun to like add in these little icons and find them. That takes only forever and ever. Um, the same thing as when you go up and actually say, well, every element that you have in this Drupal system, why is it all text? Why don't we have little icons on them make them pretty? Why, why are we always limiting ourselves to these like, well, what can we kind of agree upon? What is the lowest level we can agree upon? Why don't we try to push these things around? Um, and the same thing, like, so, so the displays and everything else, try to, like, rethink them. Um, you know, even, even though how views is listed out, why is views listed out as a table again? It's an element that we built. Um, and just to show you, I'm not, actually, this is actually working. I'm not doing a live demo because doing live demos means that my machine will crash instantly and I will burn down. Um, so this is views and how um, the, the page of views actually looks. And you can see it, it still works. It's just changing a little bit of the markup, changing a little bit of the CSS, changing quite a lot of JavaScript elements around to figure out where stuff comes from. Views UI is the biggest beast I've ever tried to wrestle with. And the amount of times I lost, and I was like, no, fuck it, I'm not going to do this. Um, and, and I began to use the arguments. I said, well, you know, an end user is not going to use views because why would he? 
And then I began to think about, you know, I've been, I've been trying to, to use um, having normal people inside of my apartment, not nerds. So having my, my girlfriend and her daughter there, and my daughter as well, trying to talk like web design with them. And you know what? They don't care about Drupal at all. <laughs> not one bit. So when I begin to like explain all these technical difficulties, like how it's good, they're like, well, it's, it's not pretty. Is it, is it easy to use? Does it look good? Can I use it for my phone? And I'm sitting there with my laptop and like trying to explain the epicness of how I made an icon move around on the screen and all these things. And you know, normal users don't care about. They don't care about if it's Drupal or not. They care about if it works. They care if it looks good. They care if it feels good. And we're running around this conference like high five each other over how epic Drupal is. But as soon as you go out of this room, they don't care at all, not one bit. So, I mean, the, the, the idea of if an end user, like, you know, let's say my, I know, if, if somebody who's never worked with you, will never work with anything of these, actually, if they begin to, to play around with the admin interface, are we then going to say to them, well, no, you're not allowed to go and play with views because that's too big, too dangerous for you? Like, no, come on, we need to, like, rethink and rebuild these elements all the time. Um, which also means that, you know, even views needs to, like, think in how can we make views prettier? How can we make these, you know, these different elements work better? And this is, like, a, this is very raw, and it, ki it kind of works. Um, but the idea is to begin to look at this as how would a non-technical person work with this stuff? How can we make it easier for them to work with it? Instead of us always going and finding an excuse why we would not let them work with it. Oh, you should not work with views because that's way too advanced for you. We should not let them give them access to the you know, user access because that's way too advanced for them. Well, what if they just downloaded Drupal and built their website on it and really don't care about what we feel that they should use it for? I mean, is it in my role as a as anybody to say somebody should not use Drupal in a certain way. I thought Drupal was built for people to build websites, not for us as nerds be like, no, you should not use this or that. Um, now, I did leave one table in this system still, and that's the content table, which is still because I'm, I'm so much caught up in the idea of, of data being a table. Why is the preview of all, all the content here a list of data? I mean, with the content type on, who cares besides of developers of what kind of type an element is? I mean, why don't we have this shown in ways that would make sense instead, like make it like preview of the data instead? Anyways, um, same thing with files. And maybe there'll be an idea to actually have previews here and so forth, like all of these ideas. So you can see, I've only like scratched the surface here of, of how to rethink it. If we begin to rethink how we're building this and thinking this is a non-technical user coming in and wanted to administrating the, the Drupal site, you can see how many things that we like, we're stopping them using it. They would become scared. Um, I, I went, of course, a little bit further because when I was done with this, I was like, hey, let's, uh, let's figure out how could, how could the themes look? How, what, if, what if themes actually look in a different way? Why is, why is themes just this long, long list of data? Why are we putting so much stuff out there? Why, is, why don't we have like little, again, little nice icons or, you know, a little heart when you set something as default? You know, these like little things. It's things that makes people like happy. And yes, I know that maybe Blue Marine sneaked in there. There's another reason for that. Anyways, later on. The same thing, now we come into the place which I know is gonna make like people freak out, you know. The modules page, the way we install a module today. Or no, we don't install it, we enable and disable or whatever it's called, I don't know. Um, anyways, so here's the modules page. And you know, um, what I began to play around was like, why don't each module have an icon? Have a visual element that tells me this is, you know, this is this is action. This is this is the band module. This is big pipe. This is this has an identity. There's a graphical identity in each element. Have that. Wouldn't that be way cooler? Wouldn't that be epic if it did that? Same thing here. Like when when an element is not, if I'm not able to show, why do we put all this data out? Why don't we try and like put it into little cards, make it human and and nice to look at? I mean, it's back to like apples design thinking where they went like, well, you know, everything have to be huggable. Why isn't it like that? Why do we have like, like install and we have a, a, a link we can't even click anymore because of the, the form items. Like, it doesn't make sense. Um, so as you can see here, my machine, this machine is getting very, very, very old, by the way, and it's getting a little bit tired of doing development on it. It's not so good, but still, it, it's coming there. Hooray. Um, 
Anyway, so by beginning to think these things instead of you know, being dragged up in our, in our concept and our idea of like everything is data tables and we are developers and we're just building for developers, I'm beginning to look at all of these interfaces as things I should play with and I should design and I should put colors on, I should put identity on. Because when I do that, I, I make it to a thing that's not a technical element. It's, it's a tool that we use to build websites and that experience should be just as good as the website you're building. It shouldn't be hidden away. Um, another thing I begin to play around with, like, your know, configurations. Again, why is this tables? It should not be tables. Like, uh, what if, what if every part of a, con of, of a configuration had its own little icon, own little element, had maybe even had, had its own color that was always symbolized with it. So when you're navigating through the site, and yes, I know that, well, what if you're color blind, and what if, what if, what if, what if, all these what ifs, but, what if we try to stop ourselves constantly from wanting to rebuild things because we are afraid we're doing something wrong and just be like, hey, why don't we just do this stuff? I mean, as, as well as the permission page. Um, so when I did this, this is the permission pages. Let me just show you how it actually looks now. I, I thought about no oh, permissions is a, is a pain in the ass today to look at. What if we re begin to rethink this? And I put a screenshot out of this on Twitter about two, three months ago, and the first feedback I got was like, no. <laughs> I'm like, Why are you, what are you saying no to? Well, I don't like that, because I'm a developer, and I need all my data to come fast and be this, this, and that. I'm like, well, but it's, it's, it's not for you. It's for those people who's not doing development. There's those who's not writing the SQL queries. It's for those people who just want to build it. What if we begin to rethink these interfaces in different ways? What if these, these buttons you can click down here actually showed the status of what's going on instead. Um, which, by the way, I also sent out a tweet with a screen of that, which had a little locked icon on the person on, and people went apeshit because I like tech boxes. I'm like, well, that's all good, but let us not stop ourselves just because somebody says no. Let's try to like, build these things around. I mean, a lot of this is like, you know, CSS details, which is like one of the elements I'm trying to build up around here. Oh, you have, you know, like, Tons of little elements that I actually oh, would make sense. Oops. I see. What is this demo about? There we go. Uh, yeah, so as you can see up, if you look at the like, little elements over here, it's like it's trying to like do a little bit of very small animations, trying to play around with that, trying to figure out how could we, how can I maybe actually elevate what we could do right now just with CSS? What if we like try to do these things? And I know that's not gonna not work on somebody's browser. Well, boo hoo hoo. Well, actually, this theme was not working with any icons on on Firefox up until last Thursday when they finally got SVG masks in. And I was actually about to, like, shit, I need to rewrite every goddamn page here to actually support Firefox. And then I was like, you know what? Nope, Firefox. You, I'm just gonna wait till you're gonna catch up because this is my little project, right? So I can do whatever I want. I can go like browser requirements. My browser requirements, you're going to use the latest kick-ass browser you can find. I'm sorry for that. I'm going to use CSS variables because I don't want to mess around with SAS. <gasps> Did he say that? Yes. I don't want to mess around with SAS. I love CSS variables. And I know there's reason to use SAS. I know all these things. But this project is just about getting stuff done. Um, same thing when I begin to like, play around with mobile. What I actually would love to do now is see if this actually works. Yes. Um, what I would love to do was actually you know, maybe change the position of where our, our, um, you know, our, our menu is. Why is it, I mean, when you use your phone, right, you have your phone up in your hand like this. And, and normally I then have something else in my hand because, you know, that's how it is. Why am I then, you know, I'm navigating my, with my thumb. Why is, why is my menu all the way up there? Why is it up in the top? Well, because that's how we used to do it. What if we placed it in the bottom? I know that... Again, putting that stuff out on Twitter, well, it doesn't work in this browser or that browser or whatever it is. Like, well, you know, it's not like we're saying that this should go into Drupal core and everybody have to do it, but let's try to rethink these things. Let's use this as a base to try to rebuild these things up. Um, and just to show you actually that my front-end admin tools or themes, I need, I need help with naming these things, right? As you can see, I'm not the best thing at my... I need some people to do work, work in marketing with me. Um, but to show you that it actually works, you know, you have... Um, you know, this is like custom themes built on top of, of Bardic. Um, same thing here with like the outside-in editing. 
And um, you know, editing up here as well. There's another design principle I began to work with. Like, how can we always use blue? What if we used another color? Like pink. Screaming pink for everything that says an action. What if we try to think these ways instead? What, what, if we, what if we didn't have an admin theme that was actually blue? I know that's like, I was trying to design something that was not blue and I could not get my mind around it. So I ended up just being like, fuck it, first version, just going to be blue. At some point, it's going to change. Um, at some point, someday, I will also grow out of blue. But there might going to be people who don't want to have a blue theme. They might want to have a green theme because their company colors are green. Or what it could be. Like, there's a million different ways of thinking these things. Um, and, and one of the principles I came back with was like, well, Basically, if you look at it as a data data, it's always going to be a table. But then if I look at it as a card instead, it, it gives me other options. I know that you know, designers and developers, you're looking at things very differently. But this is not built for developers. It's built for designers. It's built for the for a concept of where we could start. Um, it's built on you know, all these different ideas around how a card could look. You know, what, if, what if the way we're managing a field was not even like with big-ass buttons, but with small little buttons, just with icons that we would then recognize? And I know that some people would then not be able to use it, but what about all the other people who wanted to use it? Let's, like, we're trying constantly like stopping ourselves from thinking around these boxes. Um, you know, icons and colors. So the way I built around the, this 11th theme was basically saying, well, let me start by like, you know, defining also a color plate, not saying this should do everything, just a simple color plate. So I have, you know, I have my different colors based on you know, asphalt and concrete and gravel, and I have a blue sky because you need blue because we're in Drupal world, right? I have raspberry, and I have like grass and strawberries and pumpkins colors and even, even yellow snow as a color, which, again, is just my dumb sense of humor, which suddenly came in and now is written in every CSS variable in this whole system. I'm like, God damn it, Morton. You're like... Why are you doing this? Why are you calling it yellow snow? But then again, it you know, makes you laugh and made me laugh every time I have to use yellow. I'm like, don't eat that yellow snow. <laughs> um, but doing these things, like finding a design language that we want to design with, the same thing here around type. So typography, I'm always messing around with typography. If it's an admin theme, let's then use whatever it's built in, let's make it closer to the element. We'll make, it, make it look like an, maybe an app someday when progressive web apps comes for reals. Then we can just take our stuff, import it directly. Let's, I mean, at least I didn't want to use you know, six months to figure out what kind of fonts. I just want to like, use the fonts that already built into my system. Also, I don't have to download that. Um, and the CSS is pretty easy for that. And if you're a developer and goes completely into panic mode, here's the good thing. You can still just install Blue Marine, go back to the good old day of 4.7, and nobody in the world is going to mess with you. It's not like the modern inquisition of design is going to show up and like knock on your door and be like, you need to use the 11 theme. No, you can, you can actually just use Blue Marine because, I mean, I don't really care. The only thing I was sad about when I installed Blue Marine was I didn't get the gray color I used to hate with such a passion back in 4.7. So that was like a really quick um, presentation of, of this. I'm trying to run it through fast because I know that you guys like tired from all day. Um, I do. It's um, the last thing, and then we can do some questions and stuff. I can show you more of like some of the files. I do want to thank out uh, your Pfizer Digital and AppNovation who uh, picked me up about um, what, three, four months ago, and actually have just been like funding my work here. Um, it, actually, Dave Hall made sure that that happened doing you know normal ranting, but Having at least one company to back me up in this work makes it possible for me, to hopefully, to do this stuff. But, you know, I do really want to have some help for it. Um, so if you want to play around with this theme, and I do need to warn you all that as yesterday when I presented it the first time and one developer took it down and he installed it, um, his first comment was, well, the error message looks really pretty. And it is really pretty because I found two different colors of raspberry I'm using for the, for the errors. So, I mean, at least the idea of make it pretty, there's going to be a ton of bugs in this. Of course there is, because, I mean, I'm just hammering on stuff, trying to figure it, all, figure it out. And it's even worse. It's on GitHub. I have not even put it over on D.0 yet, because I don't like to do patches. I really like you know, to just work with this stuff. I don't want to go into technical levels. So, um, and then, of course, there's the... The usual question I get on this is, is, you know, why did you call it 11? And there's a, there's a simple reason for that. Um, let's see if I can make this work. Uh, 
Why is it? No. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, God damn it. Is it working? <laughs> uh, it's all right. This is, <laughs> this is, the, this is the oldest, oldest joke in any metal environment. I'm an old school heavy metal fan. So basically, he, he made this new, his new amp. And it goes to 11, and he gets this question about why does it go to 11? Why doesn't it just go to 10? Why don't you just make 10 higher, like more loud? I go, well, but it goes to 11. Like, well, but why? Well, it's one more. <laughs> and that's the whole concept here. It's like, it's one more. Just trying to figure out how we can do that. So um, here's a few links. Uh, 11 theme is the hashtag I'm going to use for it. Um, if you want to play around with it, GitHub theme machine or the me machine, uh, slash 11. Um, get up theme machine 11 style guide.vigi is where I'm putting down the style guide. Uh, I would love to get feedback and having, especially designers coming in and help out. The technical implementations can be done a thousand ways. The whole front end admin themes, maybe we should put that into a module. I don't know yet. I'm just trying to like see what kind of boundaries I can push. Um, if, um, if you have questions like what kind of icon sets we're going to use, well, at this point, it's going to be Fundawesome because um, Fundawesome is it's GPL 3.0. We can release it on DDO. People can use it and so forth. Um, so with that, and I only spoke for 35 minutes, so there's actually room for questions. With that, I will actually give you the chance to either come with some questions or you can go out and get a, a piece of this sunny, sunny, lovely weather we have here in Baltimore. I'm so happy for the swimming pool. I made sure that my girlfriend could swim in each day. It's been wonderful to see the rain from our hotel windows. Uh, it's good to nerd out. Um, so uh, if there's any questions, um, you can use the, the mic there, or I can like show off a little bit more of the like other design principles I've built in, if you want to see that. How much did you pay for the icons? How much I paid for the icons? Well, so... Um, so Font Awesome had just released a new version, or is about to release a new version, and I paid a fuck ton of money for that, um, which I put in so it can actually get developed. Besides of that, um, it's free because it's GPL 3.0, so that's good. Um, so if there's no question, I would actually like to show off a little bit of the design concepts if all people want to run, run out. Um, so there's, I have a, a sketch file here which have all the things in. And if I could, like, get my screen to, uh, uh, god damn it, come on, screen, mirror displays. When it's, gonna, when it's done, when do you think it's going to be done? Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be done when it's done. Well, no, I hope to have a stable version out within a couple of months. Uh, I know the guys at Pfizer really want to use it fast and quick, so I need to like, really push up the speed a little bit on this. Um, so actually, one of the, one of the funnier things that I, I begin to work around with in this whole 11 theme thing was the, um, the concept of sizing. Um, funny enough, it's called 11, and it's built for Drupal 8, but I'm actually building everything around the idea of of stuff is being uh, an M, one M which is 16 pixels, so you can have something that's like half an M, which is like eight pixels and so forth, so everything is gonna be divided up in that. But the good thing about that is it makes it you know, really, really easy when we begin to like want to design elements and how should they, how should stuff, let me just see here. If this is where we can see that. Uh, so, so by saying that everything has this size of one size is 16 pixels or 8 pixels, and we stop talking in pixels and talking this one or half or one and a half or two and a half or three or four and five, also makes everything actually align correctly. Same thing with all the typography as well. It's going to be 16 pixels or 24 pixels or 32 pixels, but it all it goes back to being one M or actually one rim because I like to more use rims instead of M because then I don't get confused. Anyways... I'm not that clever. I'm pretty, but I'm not clever. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Um, anyways, so as you can see, everything is always thought in this idea of being like, this is like 
all checkboxes are going to be one and a half instead of one because I want to have them big. I want to have big checkboxes. Uh, the same thing if you go and let's say, you know, the labels for checkboxes, the same concepts. Uh, yeah, everything here is divided up by 16 in some way. So that just makes it easy for us to figure out you know, where do you want to put stuff, where do you want to place it at. So that's how that works out. Um, let me see if there's more fancy stuff I can show. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, different, uh, same thing with different concepts of how do we actually want to install elements. What if, what if it had a, you know, these kind of icons in instead of having links? Like, we need to rethink, replay with these things, figuring out how can we make it more doable, how can we make it better. Because there's, there's one thing I've you know, learned over these years. Like, you know, it's, it's only us developers also who's using these laptops. So we need to rethink these elements in so many ways. And maybe we're actually getting obsolete with our laptops even worse. So stuff needs to be bigger because it needs to go into our phones and so forth. Um, let me see what else I do have here. Style, symbol, space jobs, add and layouts. Um, yeah, so basically, these are the, 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 the key concepts of the system. The same thing here, if you look at my uh, the menu here, like if you have anything, this is just like conceptual ideas. If you have anything that requires an action, like this is like what we want to focus on, well then, you know, it's going to use my, my strong signal color, which is my screaming pink here, or um, I'm trying to like break away from these like standard elements. Same thing, like everything needs, everything needs to basically have some level of an icon on it because if, it's, if it has an icon, if it's not only the words on it, but adding it in little icons, it takes a ton of time, I know, but that do make the system way more appealing to look at. And that's basically the concept of this, make Drupal pretty. First, the concept was like change everything and rebuild everything, but at the end of the day, it's like, how do I make it pretty? Because I'm not expecting to be able to, from the theme perspective, to rebuild everything. I'm expecting to at least make it prettier and make this a stepping stone. So if, if anybody want to come and help out, you know, I would, I would love to hear about it. I have a bunch of, of cards up here from my little shop. You can ping me and talk with me about this. Um, the way this is going to be built, because it's out in Contrib, it's basically going to be like, hey, I have, a, I have some ideas, some concepts I want to build. You have seen some of them. If you like it, fine. If you really, really hate them, um, you know, you can always go on. Let me see if I can find that slide. You can go up on GitHub and just clone it and build whatever you want with it. And that's the idea. Like, start to build these things, but not build them in the idea of, like, want to change everything in Drupal. I just want to build an admin design or an admin theme that makes me happy when I use Drupal. And that's the plan of it. So... With those words, and if there's no, no questions at all, yes. Just go up, take the mic. Yeah, I know. I'm, hey, I'm standing up here sweating, so. Um, it mainly so we can hear it on the recordings afterwards. So is there any chance that something like this could be ported over to the front end? So if you have a site that uh, regular users are going to log in and start using the back end elements, that they'd also have a, a front end to, to match it? Well, um, hopefully this theme is going to be so amazing that you want to use it on your front end. That's actually one of my, my I know it sounds like arrogant as, hey, I have a company called The Me Machine, right? But the, the idea is, <laughs> yeah, I have to embrace it because if I don't embrace it, you guys are going to mock me for years. No, but the idea is to make admin themes that are so visual appealing that, I mean, we're using the admin theme more than we're using the front end theme. And it should, I mean, I would hope that we could like completely remove that barrier so our site would become that pretty. Actually, that we didn't even have an admin theme, which is like beautiful all the way, but that's really, really hard and complicated. So is this a Drupal 8 theme just because you started it now and Drupal 8 is out, or are you actually using things about Drupal 8 that are different from Drupal 7? Um, so about almost a year ago when we were done doing, uh, got Drupal 8 out, and I was sitting and looking at the last Drupal 7 site I did, I decided never again to touch Drupal 7 because it doesn't have trick inside of it, and that I used a lot of my life on, and I've, it, it was simply a personal choice to never again work in Drupal 7 because I got, I got frustrated, angry, and hateful, and instead of being joyful and smiling as I'm usually, or kind of is, um, no, so right now it's only Drupal, 7, uh, Drupal 8, I could totally see if somebody uh, take all the design principles and begin to port them back. Uh, I can totally see that happen, uh, which would make a lot of sense. 
which I would love if somebody want to build that, come and join the fight or the, the party. Uh, I would hate personally ever to do anything in Drupal 7 again. I have said no to a whole bunch of projects because I don't want to work in Drupal 7 and I hate Drupal 7 with a passion and it does not make me happy. And I really want to move forward. The same thing here is like the way I'm building this is very much cutting it browsers because as I figured out with like, you know, icons that was not supported by Firefox, well, Firefox is going to catch up. Um, and that might going to be a little bit dangerous, but this is not built for Drupal Core. It's built out in Contrib. We can always fix those. Those are technical issues. This project is not about tech loss. It's about fixing design issues first and then fixing it uh, technically. So there might going to be a bunch of things that I have no idea how to fix, and that's why I need other designers to play with me and I need other developers to hopefully fix all the things I don't know anything about, because you know, um, it's, it's why we have a community for it. Any more questions? Should I actually let you all go? Well then, um, thank you for not heckling me too much, and thank you for attending, and I hope that you're all gonna jump in and you know, give me feedback on this, play around with it, download it. I'm sorry if you're gonna break your side, it probably will, because it's highly experimental, but. This is a thing that I'm going to be keep on pushing at least for the next six to eight months. Um, thank you for, to Pfizer for doing that, and uh, thank you guys for showing up. <sighs> a what? I am, am I considered what? Oh yeah, we are old. Dude, I'm old as fuck. Hey man. I know. It's just gonna be like nice to work with. Yeah, you only need one, yeah.